I really appreciate you taking time to talk to me today. It's good to see your face. It's good to see you too. How are you holding up? How are you doing? So thank you for asking. Uh, I have my good days and bad days, if I can be mm -hmm. honest. Um, as you know, it's no secret that I suffer from anxiety and depression, um, but I'm doing my part to try to keep as much of a regular schedule as possible. Like when we first started being at the crib 24 seven, I was in sweats all the time. I wasn't really doing my hair. And I yeah. finally started just getting up and trying to like, you know, put some makeup on, put clothes on as if I'm going out. So that's been helping out a lot. Yeah, that's, that's the most important part. I mean, the first, like, uh, week, two weeks, I'm introverted, so it wasn't so bothersome. Mm -hmm. But the fact that there's somebody telling you you have to stay inside yes. makes, it, it makes it so much more difficult. And I'm a water sign. So it's like, I need to go to the beach. I need to mm -hmm. feel air. I need yes. to feel the sand between my toes. <laughs> yes. So unfortunately, we can't do that right now because we're going to get fined. Mm -hmm. So... It's 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 been like I'm not gonna complain compared to people who have like you know um, I saw this interview Gaga did earlier uh, well yesterday she talked about you know we gotta stop saying we're all in this together because our together means different things. That's right. Um, mm. She was like there are people who who can't feed their children. Um, there are people who are in, who are in like these abusive domestic relationships with children who can't leave. So mm -hmm. let's stop saying all all in together. So I figured out a way to um, handle a lot of my work from home, mm -hmm. and a lot of like my speaking events and things like that. I've just been doing it, um, you know, the social distance way. Yeah. So that's that's um, more than more than anything that's been helping and I've been talking more to like my life coach and my therapist yeah. making sure I'm taking my meds and stuff every day because this uh, eventually like takes a toll on you because your sleeping pattern and everything mm -hmm. like my sleeping pattern everything is off like I didn't go to bed yet so I told myself if I went to sleep mm -mm. I told myself if I went to sleep I would miss this so I'm gonna go to sleep after oh. this Thank you yeah. so much for doing this. I yeah. appreciate it. How's of your course. family doing? How's your family coping? Um, my family's doing great. So mm, for most people who don't know, my brother um, is a detective in New York City. Okay. Um, so I guess you would consider him front lines. Um, mm -hmm. But he's doing OK. I spoke to him last night. Um, and my mom is actually a nurse in um, oh, Georgia. Georgia. Oh, wow. And, yeah. So I've been talking to her every single day just to make sure she's okay and she has mm -hmm. everything that she needs and stuff like that because they're keeping her quarantined as well because mm -hmm. the hospital she's in, it's a lot of positive patients in Dallas, mm -hmm. Georgia. Okay. So she can't be out with like, you know, people at her house and things like that. Yeah. So they have her quarantined as well since she's with sick patients. But nonetheless, like, I'm just trying to stay in gratitude and, and <laughs> blessings and not letting this like get the best of me absolutely and, and we'll certainly keep your mom and brother in our prayers thank you know, thank you for you know the work that they're doing um i too have uh cousins that work in the healthcare system and and i know what you mean and i know how stressful it can be on the family members worrying yeah. about your family members that they're saying safe and my mom actually is in a senior facility uh, and she has alzheimer's so I'm glad that right now they don't have any cases, thank God, but, you know, hoping that they can keep that facility safe, too. Um, yeah. I want to pivot a little bit. Um, because you're such a huge brand strategist um, and influencer, um, how has it been kind of adjusting? I know you lightly touched on it, like doing some of your virtual stuff now. Like, how has that been? And are corporations open to still, like, booking you for things? And, and are you just kind of figuring out what that looks like? Um no i mean a lot of companies are, are scaling back um so as far as like my brand curation and events and stuff like that that took a major hit for me mm -hmm. um one of the biggest times where like um financially for me is doing essence fest essence mm -hmm. fest has moved back coachella's moved like the nfl draft mm -hmm. um there's so many different things unfortunately it does affect me but I have to realize it affects me from a financial standpoint mm -hmm. and I'm not letting that um, like mentally fuck me up. I don't, I don't want to be in my house like crying mm -hmm. and upset because mm -hmm. 
of a money issue. Like, I really don't ever want to be to that place. So the business that I can handle, I'm trying to structure it and, and switch it as much as possible. <laughs> but I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to keep, you know, keep a positive attitude and everything. Yeah. But it's definitely been rough. Um, especially when I talk to my friends and other people who are in this business, you know, it's, I'm lucky with some of the changes I was able to do so I can still like make money and have an income. A lot of people aren't so lucky. Um, so I just like, for me, I've just been doing my part with, with friends in my live civil Academy. Just if I hear of any, any, um, information news or just opportunities, um, for them to advance or just make any type of income, here you go. Putting it Good in. for you. Yeah. That's really dope. Um, it's, you know, I'm a, a speaker as well. And of course, all of my speaking engagements got canceled. And I'm trying to find ways now um, to do webinars for companies and kind of keep myself above board. And, and the foundation, you know, is really taking a hit. Um, and May is Mental Health Awareness Month and you know we had all this great stuff planned and now I don't even know if people will be able to donate but you know again I'm trying to remain positive um, read up as much as I can talk to our accountants you know and figure out what we can do so I definitely feel you on that um, and so speaking of the foundation as you know I run Silence of Shame and thank you for supporting in the past you've already mm -hmm. so kind I know you and I aren't girlfriends but I swear from the day I met you Every time I contact you afterwards, you're always like mm -hmm. so cool and so nice. And mm -hmm. I'm just always grateful for um, your humility um, and, and everything that you do to support. So thank you. Can you talk about, again, the importance of like continuing to see your therapist, no matter who you are, if you have one, if you don't, um, and managing your mental health during the pandemic? Um, mental health, I, it was a conversation to me that was not something that was had like in a West Indian or um, African American home, because mm -hmm. you're taught to suck it up, not cry, mm -hmm. um, like um, sadness or negative emotion. For some reason, people equate that with weakness. Right. And it took a long time for me. It took me being here, and it actually took me having conversations with you, reading your book, and just being around you, where I was comfortable enough to say, you know what? Really. I'm not okay. Yeah, it's like, I'm not okay, where it's, where it's not something that's, like, hidden. You just deal with on your own. So it's like seeing you speaking your truth hmm. is something, is something that, that stayed with me because I realized... Thank and you. It, oh, it's of, of course. And I saw this movie, um, um, Inside Out, which is like a Disney movie, uh -huh. and they talked about their emotions. I was on a flight when I saw that, and I broke out into tears because I was like, this is God wanting me to confront feelings that I don't like to talk about because I'm a very like quiet. I'm like, never mind, I'll handle it. Don't worry about it. Just mm -hmm. put it to the back of my mind or busy myself up. Yeah. Um, and and that wasn't that wasn't fair to me. That wasn't fair to just my emotions and how I walk around because when you don't like address things, you're taking it out on other people. So it. Yeah. Right. my relationships at work and stuff I would just start taking it out on other people and I didn't want that so mm -hmm. it was important to me um and I am so grateful for my doctor actually got me um with with my therapist because I went to see him first because I was like listen I there's something wrong I'll be perfectly fine and then I'll start mm -hmm. getting sad so yeah. I was like I you know you go to WebMD and you <laughs> you diagnose yourself but right. he did and he told me it's an, it's actually anxiety. And come to find out there are so many people who have the same condition, mm -hmm. who are taking the same medicine as me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking yeah. of which, like, shout out to Van Lathan, if it's okay. Like, I saw him tweet yeah. about we take the same medicine. And I didn't even say anything. I just saw it on his, like, um, oh, wow. his Twitter. Yeah. So just him giving, my doctor, MJ, giving me the medicine and then, um, him hooking me up with my therapist and then I have like um, a life coach Jonathan who's in Atlanta mm -hmm. and it's just so it's so good it's like it's so needed because those conversations at times where I even want to have with my girlfriend I want to write my diary or I even want to say to Twitter yeah. last night I called Jonathan and 
we had a great conversation and it's needed and he's telling me take things out your head put it down on paper mm -hmm. speak to me you know um meditate and do certain things because unfortunately my anxiety is much higher being in the house mm -hmm. um and it's been worse for me mm -hmm. um so it's like he Thank told me you. understands that but i just tell people like listen you have to um you don't let it defeat you it's a conversation it's something that you know um that we all deal with it's an emotion sadness is an emotion mm -hmm. the same way where we get excited when we're excited happiness is happiness sadness upset anxiety mood swings all of those things we have to um get to a point of just 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 discussing and just saying where i'm comfortable now when somebody goes hey are you good i said nope i'm not right now but i will be just give me a minute and I it's, so it's, respect you for that. It helps my sanity because for so long, I was pouring into other people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm looking and there's nothing in my cup. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to make me whole because I, I was spending all my time saying yes, 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 yes yep. to everybody else. Yep. Yep. And then, nah, I'm, I'm cool. Like, no is a complete sentence. Yes, and, I say that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. People laugh at me all the time. They're like, hey, Karen. I'm like, I'm good. They're like, what does that mean? I'm good on the offer. <laughs> it's just my polite way of saying no thank you. But a therapist mm -hmm. is really important. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about it now, a big conversation is people are like, hey, I can't afford it. Right. Now, because of COVID-19, New York and California, if you're in these two places, they are giving free therapy and yep. anxiety sessions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to cough, but excuse me. No, it's okay. giving therapy and anxiety sessions, which is um, which is really really great. So if you don't have the insurance, you're going through financial strain right now, but you got the anxiety. <laughs> listen, do your googles and get into it. Yeah, and uh, to your point, uh, silence of shame on our Instagram page is at silence of shame. We posted about New York City. There's over sixty three hundred clinicians that are providing free virtual service that have signed up for the program. So definitely take Karen's advice. Google that. There's also another organization called the Crisis Text Line. Say if you're home at night, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're feeling anxious, you can text the word silence to 741741 and be connected with a counselor. So that's free. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you guys check that out. Um, the other part I think that's important about emotional health and wellness and what we're going through right now is the people that are losing loved ones. You know, mm -hmm. people are dying, you know, by the droves every day. And my heart goes out to everyone. And, you know, my sister passed away last year. And Oh, my condolences. Thank you so much. Actually, you, know, you and I haven't seen each other probably in the last year. But it's really been the worst year of my life, Karen. Um, Uh-oh, did we lose you? No, I'm here. I'm just the perfectionist in me is trying to get my stand to work. Because okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, just, but, like, so I'm coming up on the um, I'm coming up on the one year anniversary of my sister passing away, and it happened suddenly and unexpectedly. And I know you're no stranger to grief. Um, you know you were so close to Mitzi and to Mac Miller. Can mm -hmm. you talk about um, some of the healthy coping mechanisms that helped you get through the grief process? Um. It's still an everyday process. It's not something that I have, um, that I'm over. I wish grief had an expiration date. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. There are days I feel good and I'm great. And then like last night, I just, I was about to fall apart. I just mm -hmm. missed Malcolm. Mm -hmm. And it gets weird because, you know, I've had these conversations like on social and other things. People with okay with mac miller's situation and nipsey's so i've known them about the same time nipsey is somebody who has helped me grow in this business um who's helped me become like flourish especially in like california mm -hmm. and it's somebody that i respect i admire and who has done so much and it's one of those things where it's just like it's still mind boggling to me because it's weird to talk about him in past tense. Mm -hmm. um, but with Malcolm, that one hit me a little bit different because I was battling a tumor in 2018. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. In my stomach, um, on the, the left side of my stomach and on the right side, I, have an, I had an oversized fibroid. So I was in the hospital at the beginning of September. I had surgery. It was like a whole process. I lost a lot of blood. I wasn't breathing on my own. Mm -hmm. I was in the hospital for like a week. And the last person who came and saw me and sat with me was Malcolm, was Matt. Mm -hmm. He held my hand, we played tic-tac-toe, chips, like him and Quincy were amazing. And then um, he made me feel better because honestly, when I went in there, I was like ready to like go home if that makes sense mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to come from this situation because it got so the tumor got so bad at a point and I was doing so much work that I didn't sit still mm -hmm. to like get it handled quick enough mm -hmm. and then on top of that it's like I had um I had like um, um iron and immune issues so they're like okay we got to give you blood we got to do this we got to do that we got to do that and Malcolm held my hand through the whole process. And so many people confused our relationship with thinking it was more than what it was. That's right. one of the closest friends where you get to just be yourself and take things off. And I'm talking to a point of, this is somebody I go, I went bowling with. We walked two, three miles to grab pizza and do small things like his mom, I consider my second mom. And I was out the hospital two days and um, the last thing we said to each other, which was a couple hours before he died, um, I was like, I really didn't think I was gonna make this. And he was like, I don't know why you didn't think you were gonna make this. He was like, you know, I love you and I'm gonna be here for you forever. I got you forever. And then a couple hours later, he died. So in my mind for a very long time, I don't question God, but I was confused by mm -hmm. what happened. Cause this is my, just held my hand um two days prior and who's just like there and it's just like that's my friend and it's like nothing ever happens you know we i've i've gone through situations with him he's gone through situations with me but it's never been that bad where it's like you don't recover so it's one of those things where it's just like i don't know you know but grief is not something that you get over mm -hmm. um definitely it's not yeah, it's not, it's not easy at all. Malcolm is one that I feel every day. You know, Nipsey is one that you fe I feel every day, especially being in California when you walk outside. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for a very long time. It was hard for me to go out because I felt like people were just, you know, people look at you. Yeah. And they give you the, like, they feel bad for you or, like, but you don't even want that. I'm like, yo, I don't even want what you're trying to give me. I just want to be okay. Mm -hmm. Like, on days you feel okay, people are like, I'm so sorry for your condolences. I'm so sorry. I want to just hug you. I'm like, no, I don't want your energy. I don't want the hug. I just want to be okay. Yeah. So it's a lot of that, but I understand people are just coming from a, a place of love. A place, a place of love. And they just, people don't know what to say when it comes to grief. And I've realized that, so I just say, thank you, how are you? I always lead it back to them mm -hmm. and say, how are you? Because to me, for them to bring up how I feel, they must feel a way about the situation too. Um, so I just always check in with them as well. Um, and then that's that. But for me, it's just continuing to, it's good days and bad days. I pray, I meditate, I still like physically they aren't here, but spiritually I say they are. I still have the conversations. Mm -hmm. um, with uh with them aloud especially like malcolm um the hat i wear every other day is um was the last hat that he had on and the hat that he wore to the hospital mm -hmm. so that's like keeping him keeping a peace with me but mm -hmm. grieving there's no expiration date because yeah. i posted this a, a few months ago because grief is basically love with no place to go mm -hmm. it's it's basically yeah, it's it's an emotion with no place to go Thank you for sharing that. And uh, I share all of those sentiments because um, for my sister, she was eight years older than me. But when my father died, he took his own life. When I was seven months, my sister was eight years old. So my sister helped to raise me. So once we got older, not only was she like a mother figure, she was my best friend. You know, she was everything. And I'm single. I don't have kids. And so, you know, had my sister still been living, I would have been quarantined at her house. Like I did 
everything with my sister. So like, when I tell you I understand like your feelings, like I feel like my whole life has changed. And there are times where like, I didn't want to see friends. I, I felt weird even going out to social settings after it happened because to your point, people don't know what to say. They mean well, but they don't know what to say. And it just made me feel really weird. They mean well, they don't know what to say. And then you wonder if it's too soon. Should right. I be outside? Because right. the crazy part is I've had like as much of those situations. I've, I've never really dealt with like death like that before. Um, when Yams, which is ASAP, ASAP Yams um, died a few years ago, mm -hmm. I was just, it, it, it broke me. But I wasn't so close to it because mm -hmm. he was my intern years ago, like okay. 10 and 12 years ago. And you know, now he's great. He, he started his own ASAP Worldwide. He's in a great place. But like Nips hurt so much mm -hmm. to a point of I didn't get to fully mourn with him. So with Malcolm, I got to light mourn and understand because that was, which I love Karen, which is his mom to this day, because that was a private funeral. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't public. It wasn't any of that. I was allowed to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Because the last time I fell apart in a, in a setting like that, like some people took pictures of it. Next thing I know, people were texting me and like, oh, I saw you crying outside Max's house. And it was like a big thing. And it just was a vulnerable moment for me. Mm -hmm. um, but like with, with like someone like Nipsey, I didn't fully get to mourn. And you don't really get to mourn that situation because you have to think about the other people who are there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like you think about Sam and you think about uh, his brother, Black Sam, you think about his sister, you think about his mom, his dad, and all the other people and stuff like that. And you think about, like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I just need to be there and to, an, um, to be there for them, to help guide this along, to do what needs to be done. So I didn't really give myself the proper time to mourn. And I think I did, I did myself a disservice by doing that mm -hmm. um, because you you prolong the process of just like starting the grieving mm -hmm. and I'll be transparent and honest with you I like was self-medicating to get away from dealing with pain mm -hmm. which is I'm like okay because it's crazy I tell people it's easier to get prescription drugs than it is to go see a therapist yeah. and it is to find a therapist you yeah. can find a, a xanax bar quicker than you can find a black therapist which mm -hmm. is terrible but that's that's the reality mm -hmm. and it was for me to realize i don't want to succumb to what one of my best friends succumbed to yeah so whether whether it was you know um proper I'm trying to find the correct words whether something was laced or not it's still addictive yeah and, and i was falling down a, a very dark addictive path that no one knew about that i had to take myself out of and become the light for myself mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing that i take from it so i tell people i'm like yo they're like yo you're still grieving yes every day is a process right i miss you miss people right um and it's never really getting over it but I'm doing the work of mm -hmm. not letting the darkness win. That's right. That's right. Thank you. And God bless you for just you. doing the work and standing up for yourself, you. right? You said you're being the light in your own life. And yeah. if, if everybody, I only have two quick questions, but I know you got to go. Oh, no, no, no. You're good. I'm but if, good. If, I got the camera right. <laughs> so no, I'm good. If, uh, if everybody could put some hearts up right now uh, for Nipsey. I wish I could see all the... Malcolm. Put a heart up for my sister. I'll call her name Anjali Maria Arnold. That was my sister, um, who's my life. And uh, we, we're gonna keep doing this work. We're gonna keep shining the light on our own lives and uplift, you know, our community and our loved ones that are passed on. Um, I want to pivot a little bit. Uh, yeah, wellness. You know, I just started this. I built a brand two weeks ago. <laughs> um, Congratulations. You know, I, I follow you. <laughs> 
I love all that you're doing. You motivate me and inspire me. And oh, I was like, you know what? I want to create this wellness brand and check in with people. And I had texted Charlemagne. He was my first guest. He was like, of course I'll do it. And so, you know, we have people like yourself and, and D Nice is coming on Friday. It's just been oh, nice. amazing. So I'm oh, grateful. Nice. So I say all that to say, yeah, wellness is about mind, body, soul, and business, right? Because you mm -hmm. want to make sure that your business is financially well, because that plays a part with your mental and physical psyche. So um, I love the IG post that you did a few weeks ago about Harvard's Business School. You said she turned her can into cans and dreams into plans. What are some of your tips that you can provide, Karen, about financial wellness during this time of the pandemic? Anything um, for entrepreneurs or people with side hustles? Okay, a few things. Okay. Um, there's so much information being given out right now, um, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's great that we have all these resources, but the bad thing is you may be absorbing and taking, up, taking in too much information. So pick and choose what you take in. But at the same time, there are all these companies who are doing loan forgiveness, who are doing um, um, helping with like um, payments and different stuff like that. Like Chase is doing one, um, Shea Moisture. Uh, I believe Jack on Twitter just uh, mentioned it. There's so many different companies. So if you are a business who have been hit hard by this, um, I'm talking from the beauty to, um, to dining space or whatever the case may be. There are companies out there that are willing to help you. So while you're looking for toilet paper, Clorox, and the things that you think is going to make you survive for a month, make sure that you're also looking at that business tool. That's one. And I like to tell people, um, when creating your business, there's so many different platforms that give you free information about what that platform is doing so you're ahead of the curve so when you see say for instance i saw it was a whole bunch of conversation on twitter about instagram they're like oh instagram just banned this instagram just did this xyz i'm like no that's a lie because it would be up on their blog right if they put up <laughs> any new updates they would tell you they don't just change the rules for this mm -hmm. one person on ig live so make sure you're actually seeing the blog posts that Facebook, YouTube, Giphy, all these companies mm -hmm. put out information and they push you ahead of the, like you're ahead of the curve. And mm -hmm. I make sure I go in and I read everything so I know what's coming and then just push it out. Um, another thing is during this time, I mean, you can pick and choose. I tell people it's up to you. You could learn a new craft or you could just get through this however you want to do it. Right. But try to do something for yourself. And I really mean that. Not something you see on social media. Somebody did a TikTok dance or something. If it's read a book. If it's have a conversation with yourself in the mirror. If it's light a candle. If it's manifest. If it's cry. If it's call a friend on FaceTime. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I just was sitting still. Like, that has been a big thing for me because I rip, rip, go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. I was ready to kill myself because I'd rather go do bookings than go, go have this surgery that I needed. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's sitting still, finding something that you actually can take out of this that will help you in your mental wellness. So it's not what I think. Because that third thing for me is I downloaded, I believe it's called Robin Hood, the, um, the app where you can do uh you can buy stocks oh yeah <laughs> yeah so i downloaded that shout out to my friend 11 8 who put me on i was on there i was like let me get me some clorox let me <laughs> I, know some that's Zoom. Right. I want everybody was on amazon buying it i went to robin hood and was like let me buy amazon let me buy twitter mm -hmm. um i did boeing because we're going to get back on those planes and they're going to be better that's so right. at least it's like that little bit um that there little bit not. there yeah mm -hmm. but there's so many different things i know like the big thing now um when i was in chicago uh stormy who's big out there coach stormy i don't know her last name she has this whole like thousand family thing she's doing to help people online so you could probably look on her instagram but okay. there's so many different things i, I know i look up a lot <laughs> great great tips 
And then on a personal finance note, make sure you define your home mortgage, um, your car note loans. Uh, all of our banks are starting to do that for and mortgage lenders. Um, I went ahead and deferred my mortgage because that's just good emergency money for me to have. And at the end of the three month period, they can mm -hmm. either tack it on to the end of my loan and maybe I can invest that money. So, you know, definitely make sure um, you are reading and checking out all the information that's out there because there's so many companies willing to help. But even with the deferred permit uh, uh, payments, adding in there, say if you do decide to take that three months, find out with that company how they're going to tack it on at the end so you're not living great for 90 days. Oh, that's true. The end of the year, here comes, that's you know, right. fees and this and that. So talk to them and make sure that you have some sort of like loan forgiveness. Exactly. Or, or something set in place so you can slowly get back into um, normal life when we that's get right. there. I don't even know what's normal anymore. I know. Well, we call, <laughs> I call it now, instead of the new normal, it's the now normal, because hopefully we will get back to, you know, what we thought was our sense of normalcy, but it's just the now normal. Um, I don't even think we're ever going to get back to that. It's always going to really? be different. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole new, it's a whole new uh, ball game. Even now when you go outside, how you, people are close to you, how you wash your hands, you're going to be so much more aware of certain things. Yeah. And I think I'm going to keep this, um, give me distance, social distance, like back up. I'm going to tell, <laughs> <laughs> tell Walgreens and write it, keep those little lines on the floor and everything else. But I don't yeah. think we're going to go back to the same, which could be a good thing. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's mm -hmm. definitely something that we can take from this and learn. Um, even as mm -hmm. people like when they're catching the flu and, you know, you think about how many times you're like shaking hands with people and on the airplanes. Mm -hmm. I actually started wiping down planes a long time ago when I would get on. But, you know, I think definitely we're going to try to take some of the, the good from this bad situation and apply it in the future. Um, can you talk a little bit more, Karen, about what you're doing for self-care? I mean, I know everybody's been like logging on to the DJs and checking out you know all no that. i'm good i'm good i really wasn't in the club before so i like <laughs> checked out some of the battles shout out to like swiss beats has been killing it yeah but i'm cool i wasn't really like a party person i like i'll go to certain people's conversations and things on ig live um that are light meaningful but i've been taking this time to just chill out, you know, have conversations. I'm really putting in time into my Live Civil brand I really care about, mm -hmm. which, you know, before I was letting my partner run it, but now yeah. this is something I care about. I'm like, my focus, my thing. I have a brand new team on the Live Civil team is all females, which I'm really oh, excited great. about. Yeah. Um, um, shout out to Ayana. So I'm just really excited about every single team member that I have. Um, and... I'm just pretty much chilling in the house. I'm just chilling. I turned my patio. Um, I'm turning that into um, a workout studio. I bought a Peloton, Peloton, nice. whatever that's yeah. called. Yeah. Waiting to come. Yeah. So I'm redoing the patio. That's gonna be like my workout area. Okay. Um, I'm doing my my meditating, chilling. I'm just continuing to keep a schedule, mm -hmm. so that way I still have like some sort of like normal life happening outside of this so i wake up first thing i do i make my bed because <laughs> i just need it up done i make yep. my bed um meditate i have some tea mm -hmm. um i have some tea um i talk to god i play my power song i do my exfoliant on my face um what else is there Maybe do some emails, some different things like that. Depends on how, like, my schedule for the day. I'll try to switch it up so it's mm -hmm. not the same and yeah. nothing becomes redundant. And then yeah. I give myself the best part of the day is I give myself 20 minutes outside. Mm -hmm. um, I found the perfect area <laughs> that nobody right. is near me in my vicinity that I'm able to just sit outside and with my dog and see Los Angeles is so beautiful now because we don't have, um, I think, like 80% of the smog. I saw a picture. I was like, so oh my God. I'm like sitting outside watching the sunset. It's so beautiful. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Good for you. So just, just chilling, pouring back into myself. I don't want to come in here and pretend I'm doing like, oh, I'm coming. Mad work, mad work, mad work. No. I'm pouring back into my.
uh, hair, <laughs> my makeup, light little girly things. Yeah, I love that. And the fact that you're giving yourself permission to do nothing, because we have seen a lot yep. of people talking about, you know, you got to use this time to, you know, start a new company, sure. do this, do that. And that's great. And you want to be productive. But some people, they don't know how they're going to get by, the, you know, from one yeah. day to the next. So you got to just I, allow yourself yeah. to grace. I've been productive for 34 years. I'm allowed to break. <laughs> so I, I'm here for everybody else, and I'm giving courage, and I'm sending yes. love and light. But I needed this. I needed this time. Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking at my schedule and all this stuff. Like, since I've been in the house, I've canceled 28 events. Wow. 28. And that's, we, what, got another month? So it's like, that's not including the rest of this month. So I'm okay because that's planes, that's this, that's that bags under my eyes. And me thinking, I thought those things were important. And it's yeah. um, whatever God is trying to tell me, I'm just trying to sit and listen. There you go. There you yeah. go. So quiet moments with God that matters most. And this is Holy Week for those of you um, that have, you know, the faith that believes in this being Holy Week. Um, and I, I, too, have been trying to sit still and listen. I've been reflecting on my time that I spent in Jerusalem and really just trying to figure out God's will over my life. Um, you know, a lot of people who may not know me, because um, I know I'm a, a lot older than some of your viewers, but, you know, I come from the entertainment business and now to do this work in mental health, like, here and I really feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, this is my life calling and this is my work. And so allowing myself to just kind of sit and, and see what else God wants for me. So I'm just happy to be able to have this conversation. I'm happy to have you here with me. Um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So I just want to leave everybody with some resources. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure you're continuing to go to cdc.gov to get all the information that you need. Um, as Karen mentioned earlier, uh, if you're in New York or L.A., there are a lot of um, therapists that are doing uh, free virtual sessions. And just Google telehealth, right? Even if you're not in those areas, you're calling from other cities and states and countries. Um, so many, well, not even so many, most clinicians have all moved to virtual support now. And yeah. they're lowering their costs. Um, so it's a lot more affordable. Remember, I mentioned you can text the word silence to 741741 if you need to text with somebody, if you feel like you're having a crisis. Also, the suicide prevention lifeline number is 1-800-273-TALK. Um, make sure you follow us on at Silence to Shame. And Karen, I don't know if you know, but April, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. It's coming back around. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be reaching out to you. Maybe we can. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm always saying yes to you. I, I appreciate <laughs> this is, that. Yeah, this is like therapy without the copay. So yeah. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. always saying yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. So May 5th is National Silence to Shame Day. So you guys follow us at Silence to Shame. Um, consider following me at Shanti Doss 404. I do these wellness check-ins once a day um, at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking to D1, the rapper from Louisiana. It's a lot oh, of fun. I love him. He is amazing. Such amazing. Yeah, such, an, such so amazing cool. energy. And, you know, right now, Louisiana is one of the hot spots. So we want to check in with him and see how their families, uh, all the families are doing down there um, through COVID-19. But, Karen, I just, I wish you love, light, blessings, peace. <laughs> Um, thank you and thank I hope that you get you some rest today and and just thank you for everything you've done for the culture and how you continue to inspire everybody thank you so much can I I just want to leave off two things Please, real yes. quick for yes. my people who are listening one second let me go grab it real quick okay no problem all right guys Karen, Karen will be right back if you're if you're um having a good time and enjoying this conversation Put some hands up. Give me some hands in the comments. Somebody also asked if you're recording this session. Yes, I am recording it. Um, all of the Yale Wellness check-ins um, you can view on YouTube. Just go under Yale Wellness on YouTube. Hi, Portia. We love you, too. Okay, I'm coming. I'm just fixing it real quick. No, take your time. It's all good. What's up, Patrice Hector? I'm just shouting out some people. And okay, so real quick. Before we go, we're practicing safety at home and everything else in between because this has been a big thing when I see how people are disposing of their gloves and how they're acting. Y'all remember, they come in different colors. We got the pink, we got the purple, we got the whatever else. Make sure you have your mask. And the most important part about the mask is, you know, you can just get a regular spray. 
If you can spray through it, it's not a good mask. The whole purpose is to hold things. So if you're spraying through it, it doesn't work. To take off your gloves, it's very simple. You pinch the middle. That's right. It grabs in here. You close it up. You take the thumb. You put it underneath here. Grab. Ah. Done. And you put it in the garbage. Put a little hand sanitizer and we're done. I've seen a lot, I'm going to say a lot of men <laughs> doing this wrong and still trying to like, hey, Karen, don't even wave my way. <laughs> Get these gloves together. <laughs> Let's bring the numbers down in the black community, people. That's right. We're in this, we're in this together. That's the one time that line works. <laughs> thank, thank you for that. Because, thank you. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of the latest news stories saying that how the rates of death are really high in the African-American communities. And that's a whole different conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we can do some, some stuff through Live Civil, you know, yeah. talking about, you know, having healthy diets and, and what we do and how we feed our souls. Because a lot of the African-Americans that have been dying have pre-existing health conditions. So, And that's a problem. Um, yeah. um, it is diabetes um, is, a, is a big one. And like you mentioned, heart problems. High blood pressure. Mm -hmm high blood pressure, not going to the doctor annually, maybe every six months yeah. and thinking I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. The old traditional way of how we used to eat. Me, I'm, I'm a Haitian American. So you can imagine the things that like my family um, used to eat. You know, me and my brothers, we changed our eating habits. He's vegan. I was vegan for three and a half years. And now I just eat clean and fresh. And that's the same thing too. I know it's not easy. It's <laughs> Because this country is very marginalized. I know it's easier to get a bag of chips than it is to get some fruit. Yeah. But just give yourself the option of having something healthier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so I'm much. grateful. I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. I didn't get to see all the comments, but I'm about to swipe through it. And then um, if you guys have any questions or whatever, hit me on Twitter, at KarenCivil.com, and I'll respond if you had any additional questions and whatnot thank you so much everyone and i love you so much thank you so much for your strength and spirit on this time oh, love and you for too. Thank you.